This episode of the Gold Blooded Podcast is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. M Y B O O K I E.ag. Use promo code Gold Blood, one word, to match up to 100% of your initial deposit. Everybody, here we are, episode number two. This is what we're doing. Steve's blown out the back. He doesn't know which way is up right now. Daddy's watching soccer. Blew my ear drums out there. Well, that's right. I could sure. Chris, the headphones is really struggling down there, like a fucking a condom that was just. You think those are turned on? Like a condom that was just exploded in. You think Um, those headphones are turned on? No, he's listening to something else. I've got a new game. See if I can get through the entire read before he realizes we're doing the read. No, I see. That's all. I won't. Yeah, we won't sell you out this time. Um, It took Steve like fourteen snaps to get his attention last um, time. He was like waving, doing jumping jacks. He's probably got. I was old, trying to read faster, as fast listen, as I could. He's probably got his old lady just talking to him in the headphones. Talking dirty? Yeah, and he's just like, <laughs> he's texting in response, and it's like a, she, yeah. She's sending voice texts. Is that's right. She's, Is he doing anything under the table? <laughs> Who we knows? can't see. Whatever he's into, at least he's awake. Um, so we were having a conversation before we got going here, and I don't know if we're going to jump back into it, are we? Yes. Okay. Rob's got some some pretty interesting data we based talking. on 49er historical that's receiving right. yards right. and stuff. That's right. <laughs> So you wanted to know who was the tight end that had the most receptions in a season as a 49er? Mm -hmm. So I pulled up who has the most receptions in a season as a 49er. And you might be interested to know who the top eight were. (laughs) Okay. All right. Starting at number one. As a tight end or just in general? Just overall. Okay. Receptions. I'll get to to the tight end. Okay. Um, Overall receptions. uh, At number one was Jerry Rice. We all expected that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At number two was Jerry Rice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, number three was Jerry Rice. Ooh. Number four was a guy named uh, Jerry Rice. Yeah, Jerry Rice. <laughs> number five was Terrell Owens. Oh. Number six was a guy named uh, Jerry Rice. I heard of him. As Joe would say, he's a real <laughs> go-getter, that kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seven and eight was also both Terrell Owens. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Uh, and number nine was a fullback, Roger Craig. Okay. Keep going until I hear the name I want to hear. Uh, number ten was a running back, Derek LaVille. Okay. Number 11 was a wide receiver by the name of Jerry Rice. Yep. 12 was a wide receiver, Anquan Bolden. Well, actually, maybe he's not as close as I think he is. I'm, I'm talking about George Kittle. Uh, How close is he on this? At, currently, he's at 26th. 26th all-time receptions. Yes. Not receiving yards, no. just receptions, receptions in a single and season. Our, the leader for tight ends in a season for the 49ers in 2004 was Eric Johnson. He had 82. Kittle is at 79. Jessica Simpson. 79. Eric Johnson's claim to fame is that he's married to a fat country star. So what... What? Um, Jessica Simpson? Yeah. Is she fat now? She's plump. <laughs> I'll bring her up. And the titties get bigger too? Oh, yeah. I'll oh, bring her up. too bad then. <laughs> uh, Those things were all right. But I think she might have got some facial plastic surgery that wasn't all that good. Uh, let's see. Good. We'll see. That's too, she didn't need any. Oh. She was a good looking head. Let's see what she did. It's a, it's a compulsion. What caught my eye was that the top... Yardage year for Jerry Rice was eighteen forty eight, which is pretty Absolutely fucking insane. ridiculous. So then, when I clicked on yards to see who had the the most receiving yards in a season, mm-hmm. uh, number one was Jerry Rice, number two was Jerry Rice, number three was Jerry Rice, 
Number four, however, was Jerry Rice. <laughs> number five was a guy named Jerry Rice. Number six was also Jerry Rice. <laughs> Real go-getter. <laughs> T.O. was uh, seven, and T.O. was eight. Dave Parks was nine. Yeah, she can still. She can still. She, that's almost like a. Holy shit. That's like a better Anna Nicole. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I got no problem with that. Good for her. Except she's probably the breadwinner. Oh, I yeah, mean, What's Eric, sure. Eric Johnson ain't making no money now. Was she, who was she before that? Romo? I think yeah, so, he, yeah. he was one of them. One? Yeah. And then that... She um, downgraded. That dude from the boy band. What's his name? Nick Lachey. But oh, that, yeah. was, that was in the 80s. See, he knows who Nick Lachey is, but he don't know who Eric Johnson yeah, that's is. that's fucked up. That tells you what's <laughs> that, up that with his me, priorities. Yeah, yeah. Me, I didn't know his name. Tells me why he would suck off for a Super Bowl. That's, that's right, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways, George Kittle is currently sitting at 13th all-time receiving yards in a season as a 49er. That's insane. Behind uh, Jerry Rice. <laughs> in front of Jerry Rice. <laughs> Sit sandwiched in between Jerry Rice and Jerry so, Rice. And then I, I remember a while ago I looked into this and um, just how ridiculous Jerry Rice's career numbers Be- before are. Before you get to that, in the top 15 seasons for 49ers receiving yards, Jerry Rice is 10 of them. <laughs> 10. So all-time receiving yards in NFL history. Jerry Rice sits alone at the top with 22,895 yards. So only 100 yards away from 23K. Okay. Second place, Larry Jerry Fitz. Rice? <laughs> <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald. Okay, uh, Jerry Rice is just a, a one game away from 23K, right? Okay. Larry Fitzgerald is sitting 16,243 yards. So Larry Fitzgerald has had 66, roughly around 50, give him 59% of Jerry Rice's career. (laughs) Insane. That's absolutely insane. And then he did it in an era where it wasn't, it was more smash mouth, uh, running back centric, and whatnot. So I looked at, I'm like, well, how many receiving yards did he get a game? Receiving yards per game average, Jerry Rice is 11th in average receiving yards per game. Ahead of him are all guys that are playing right now. Julio, Odell, Antonio Brown, uh, Michael Thomas, A.J. Green, Mike Evans, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Johnson. And, I mean, it speaks volumes that even Rice was ahead of the guys he played with. You don't see Michael Irving on that list. You no. Don't see, you well, know, Michael Irving is uh, three behind him. You don't see Don Beebe on that list. You, so, don't know, you don't know nothing about Don Beebe. Let's rewind back, like, six the years. The white wide receiver. So. Six years when everybody proclaimed that Calvin Johnson was going to be the next Jerry Rice, and he didn't even fucking come close. <laughs> well, that's because he was also in Detroit. And Odell Beckham Jr. was proclaimed to be the next Jerry Rice. And so far, he's not even fucking close. Yeah, but but again, neither of those guys are playing with two of the best quarterbacks of all time either. No, they're not. But you it's something to be said for that. There's something to be said for proclaiming somebody as the next fucking Jerry Rice in their first two years in the NFL. Let's calm the yeah, fuck down. But this I dude hear, played for 23 but I, years. I believe that I believe that Calvin Johnson had the potential, and I believe he would have not maybe to surpass Rice, but he had that potential to be. Oh, he was a m- he was animal. a monster, and he. I mean, where is he going? He's in Detroit. He wasn't going to. J- Jerry you know? Rice played 16 years in San Francisco, mm-hmm. 12 years over a thousand yards. He also is the all-time leading yards overall yards for mm-hmm. the Niners. At 19,247, that's how many were were with the Niners. You care to guess who's in second? Jerry Rice. Uh, (laughs) Close. (laughs) Terrell Owens. Okay. Jerry Rice had 19,000. Care to guess what T.O. had? Uh, I'm going to go with 7,000. I'm going to say 12. 8,500. 8,500. So he's got double for the lead. Double T.O.'s career as a Niner. Let's see who the highest current player is at. So I got this pulled up right now. All time receptions leader in first place, Jerry Rice, with uh, 1,549 receptions. Behind him, Tony Gonzalez, and then current player, Larry Fitzgerald, 1,299 receptions for Larry Fitzgerald. So <laughs> Fitzgerald is still, what is that, 250 yards away 
or, or 250 receptions away. I don't think he's catching them. Not a chance. That's like three more seasons for him. Four. Three more great seasons for Larry Fitzgerald to catch Jerry Rice in receptions. Yeah, no he's not fucking way. No. No, some, Kitt- of those, some of those Rice records will never be broke. Kittle is already 35th all time. Which is insane, given the, yeah, the era that we are playing in but right now. But his longevity is, was second to none in the receiver position. He played 20 fucking years. Come Absolutely on. insane. And, and productive. He probably could still come out and put numbers up. I said that about the T.O. thing the other day, and he said I was high. Yeah, so Joe sent a picture of T.O. looking naked. ripped as all shit naked. at age, what, 45? Yeah. He's 45 years old. Mm. And I said that he probably still has about 2,000 yards and 15 touchdowns left in him, maybe over the course of three seasons. And Joe said I was high. I thought you meant in one year. But... No, <laughs> not in one year. George Kittle is already 35th all-time in yards as a Niner for rece- receiving. <laughs> <laughs> Care to guess who? Uh, Jerry Rice. Who the Number 11 all-time receptions. Number 11 all-time receptions? You want to hear the first 10? Will okay. make it easier? Yep. Jerry Rice, T.O., Roger Craig, Dwight Clark, Vernon Davis, Brent Jones, Billy Wilson, Gene Washington, John Taylor, Michael Crabtree. I was going to say Crab. Number 12 is J.J. Stokes. Okay. After this next person. Number 11. Kittle? Nope. Kittle's like Vernon. 45th. I already said Vernon. Oh, Vernon sorry. was... Uh, F- um, Fifth. Frank? Frank. Eleventh all time in receptions. Yeah. He was dumping. He was catching all Alex's. He was dumps. dumping. Yeah. He was number one all time in pass protection. Ever for any yes, team. For in the history of the NFL. Yeah. Highlight real blow ups. Alright, so what are we rolling to now? Uh we gotta do our uh lock of the week. Okay. Last time. Thank so God. what are the current standings? I know. Alright, so uh down down down. Chris has officially won. The Lock of the Week Challenge. With I've officially a, lost. <laughs> w- currently sitting... Yeah, right? Currently sitting with yeah, a... I let you wear it when we perform my work belt. <laughs> <laughs> a 10-6 and six record by Chris. Very impressive. Uh, had the Vikings this past week, minus 5.5 at Detroit. That was a win. Uh, I had the Ravens plus 4.5 at the Chargers. That was a win. That puts me at 8-8 eight and eight on the season. Well, Chris, 500. Chris could be the only one with a winning record here. Yeah. Depending on what you guys Could. Do. Yeah. Uh, Joe had the Dolphins minus 4 versus Jacksonville. That they did got, not cover. They, got, they didn't even win. They didn't even I win. Know who I, I know how I'm picking next year. Oh. Whatever Chris picks. No, well, the opposite of whatever you pick, I'd be winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Be 11-5. That's right. Rob is, uh, Rob is tied with me. <laughs> See, that's just as impressive uh, to be <laughs> consistent <laughs> one way or the other, you know? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sure. sorry, good, Rob's tied with me at 8-8 eight and eight yeah. after he picked a win this week. Uh, Bills plus 13 at the Patriots. And Curran coming in with a win. 7-9. Uh, so and nine. It's not 500 and definitely not locks. But compared to Joe, I guess it's good. Next yeah. year, I'm definitely Bears... going to make a pick and then go the other way. Well, You're right. The, the Browns' season of not winning a single game is equally as impressive as the Patriots winning so, every game. Now I have. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> it is. It's equally as con- it's consistent. <laughs> I have never stooped to the point of picking against the Niners for my lock of the week. I've never done that until what today? No, oh. ever. I've never done that. Curran did that last week. He had Bears minus four. Actually, I suppose yeah. He had the yeah. Bears winning by more than four. Hmm. Well, he was trying to get you know he's trying to tie with you guys you know whatever it takes. Well, I'm just trying to take some heat off myself. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. You, you're selling a kid down the river. <laughs> oh, I guess we know you're willing to push him downstairs, whatever it takes. Um, with that said, so, that, what? Oh, with that said, I have a backbone and I root for my team, so I'm taking the Niners this week plus <laughs> ten. All right, Joe's lock of the week is Niners. Now that Chris has already won, the it really comes down to me versus you for second place. So I think that you do silent picks. I already wrote mine down. All right, if you, I believe you. What do you got? No, you go first. If I already wrote mine down, that's okay. the way this works. I was gonna take. Uh, <laughs> I'm taking the Colts minus three and a half. Get the fuck out! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been funny if I did that. What a uh, stupid pick that minus is. Minus three and a half. Yep. Who are they playing? Titans winning in Sunday oh, night game. Oh, that's whoever gets into the playoffs. Yep, winning in. At Titans. Mariota whoever might not play. Whoever wins that game goes to the playoffs. Baba. Might okay. be. Uh, might be the Gabbert show. Ugh. Colts minus three and a half at Titans should be the yep. Kaepernick show. As you'll see that I have written down here, which I guess doesn't matter. I agree with that. Picked, that actually is, be a very good pickup for them. I took the Saints minus nine at home against the Panthers. Mm. Teddy Bridgewater might be playing. Yeah, I don't know. I, are the Saints locked in to no matter what happens? 
I think they might be locked into a bye, but I don't know if they're locked into a Where did field. you read that Teddy Bridgewater is going to play this week? Pro football talk. Not a headline. So Teddy Bridgewater will play this week. So you're picking a team that's playing for nothing? Sure. Okay. Uh, he says he don't give a fuck. Right. Maybe they I are. guess not. Maybe that's they're for something with Teddy Bridgewater. I respect it. What's Curran's pick? Curran <laughs> took the Bears. Again? Plus four, but the line is four and a half. At Minnesota. Okay. He took the Bears oh. at Minnesota. And I'm doing uh, the Eagles minus seven at Washington. Wow. Four out of five road games we picked. Yeah, the Saints have absolutely nothing to lose at all this oh. week if they lose. I think they're, they're, yeah, they're I think locked the fact into that number Bridgewater one. is playing is better then. Yeah, maybe. Just he's, playing, he's got he, something he to play might for. Be playing for a job. Yeah, he's a look at me. I can still play yeah. this week. I've been fooled many times by thinking what was the backup that? quarterback. Our system was... shutting down. Nah, uh, we're system. done. We're yeah. not. We're not we're recording. We're not recording. <laughs> all right, uh, mystery quote. I got a mystery quote. Oh, yay! I have a mystery quote. The end of the year, Daddy got a mystery quote. <laughs> okay, this is a quarterback in the NFL, Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> hey, and Jerry Rice, his, Nick Mullins. His claim <laughs> is it's it's more of a claim. Kyle than it is a, um, a Mike quote. Dicka. But this quarterback says he hasn't lost a game by more than one score since he was a sophomore in high school. That was a claim he made to the news people today. Baker Mayfield, no sir. And Nick, they went back. Nick Mullins. They went no, no, sir. They went back and tracked it, and they said he hasn't lost a game he started since. Wow. Uh, it actually was his senior year of high school because wow. they found one game his senior year it's that they started. Impressive. Yeah. So, but they found it, there were games in the NFL where he didn't start, where his team got blown out, and there were games in college where his college got, but he didn't start. Starting any, quarterback. Any game as a starting quarterback. But I mean, hasn't, right now is he a starting quarterback? Yes, sir. By default? No, he, he was the starter week one. Um, hmm. That's a good one. Yay! Daddy got a good one! Oh, that is a good one. Andrew Luck? No, sir. Um, Patrick Mahomes? No, sir. Man, wow. never been okay. blown out. It's, uh, it's gotta be younger. It's a yeah, that's what I'm it's thinking. It has to be. Like, yeah. Brady's it's gotten blown out. No, AFC. AFC? Is it the uh, Darnold? Nope. Um, shit. AFC, it's got to be Lamar Jackson. Ah. No, but he's a black guy. <laughs> he's a black guy. Fuck. Jameis, no, that's NFC. Um, do, 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 do. Mariota? Oh, uh, the one on the Bills? Nope. Uh, no. no, that's Josh Allen. Fuck. Cam Newton. Nope. AFC. Damn, that's a good one, too. What the that's fuck? Tim Tebow? Has a really <laughs> good, uh, it's a really good. Uh, Mahomes. No. Really good uh, wide receiver quarterback combo. Oh, Deshaun Watson. Yes, sir. Good for him. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. So, Daddy, good, for the end of the year, he, he fit it. the mold. He just never came to my mind. Yeah, like, young good, guy. Yeah. Athletic. Yep. Yeah. Because those athletic guys in college and, so, yeah, and, and, s- and new, he has to be new because no NFL quarterback is a quarterback for more than five years and doesn't get blown out once. I'll send the article just so you guys can see it. All right, I got one. I got a few here. I actually got quite a few. We're uh, we're light on Good emails we this s- week. Kill some time. Yeah, well, we're we light on emails this week. Though, so. so no worries. Um, clock, 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 clock it. <laughs> this is a head coach in the NFL that has been recently criticized for an offensive coach in the NFL that has recently been criticized for sitting on the bench and looking at a notepad while their defense is on the field. Uh, a what coach? And Current head coach. Current head Offensive coach. head coach. Kyle Shanahan. I'm not the only one that does that. The guy in L.A. does it a lot, and they're all right. It depends on where we are in the game. Just remember, it's not hard to see that I'm on the headsets with the defense. I can hear everything. I can see what's going on. There's pretty big screens on the field. It's not like I can't see anything. I hear everything going on. A lot of times I'm trying to get the next series ready so I can tell those guys, here's what's coming. Here's what I'm thinking about going into the next series. Shanahan. No. It's someone not doing well. Because uh, my next would have been McVay. Mm-hmm. But he's, he mentioned McVay. Yeah. <laughs> head coach that's watching. Uh, who is there any other head coaches that don't have OCs right now? I'm not 100% sure of whether he has a 
OC by title, but he pretty much is the OC. Gruden? Nope. Good guess, though. Andy Reid? Nope. Young guy. Good guess. Oh, what's his name in Philly? Nope. Hmm. Cowboys? Young guy. The Colts coach? Nope. We almost hired him. That'd be Nagy. Uh, Nagy? Nope. We almost hired him. And got Tom Sula instead. Tom Sula. Um, uh, uh, McDaniels? Nope. He's not a head coach. Uh, Vance Joseph? Nope. <laughs> He's white. <laughs> that guy's always making bad um, decisions. Um, AFC. AFC East. Um, Dolphins? Tannehill? Well, well that's, that's the, the quarterback, quarterback, but yes, Dolphins. Gase. There you go. Giddy up. Yep. Okay, so this is a current quarterback in the NFL who Ryan is Leaf. referring to his his uh, former coach. Jerry Rice? You're supposed to play with emotion. I got You're supposed Ryan to play with passion. Quite honestly, if you don't like it, whatever. Football is not meant to be a soft game. I could care less. I'm not trying to make friends with anyone outside this locker room. Uh, <laughs> Are we laughing at the quote or Chris just leaving? Chris just leaving. Okay. Uh, Did he say anything to anybody? No. Just left. Just took, a, took a call. He was looking at his phone. And bolted. Chris just had a family emergency. He ran. Uh, so we're here, we're currently uh, we're currently uh-huh. pa- we're, we're currently, ghost riding the whip right yeah, now. We're, we're passengers on a, r- a rudderless <laughs> ship. He saw me. Now. He saw me too because I started looking for this. Ah, I was trying to hey, get him. He fucked you. Yeah, he fucked well, that me. means he's going to be gone extended. <laughs> um, quarterback, not trying to make any friends outside of this locker room. Yep. AFC, did you say conference? Yet? Nope. But okay. he's he's um, Mitch Trubisky referring to his displeasure with his former coach. Quarterback who has multiple. Oh, Baker coaches. Mayfield. Yep. You saw him fucking eyeballing uh, <laughs> Hugh was, Jackson. That was sexy. And then he did it like a, like he did it as he was running away, and then he reset and did it again in the same fucking. Yeah. He's oof. a cock. I love Whoa. him. I like him a lot. He's savvy. He's a winner. Yeah, he is. A lot to be excited about in Cleveland. Yeah, no. Okay, so <laughs> this is a good one. This is a multi-parter. Multi-part. And this this goes back a few months. I completely missed this story when it came out. think our out. volume levels are okay? We're just going to ghost ride this? I guess. If this sounds okay, then we don't need him. Yeah, I guess not. Right? Although it is ha- nice to have someone to run the projector screen and all to that what? stuff. Well, to pull up To the, not run I mean, the projector screen. I mean... <laughs> hey, you bring the clock not, up? Not to be a dick, but... Chris, you get the clock? The clock! <laughs> clock! Not, not to be a dick, but... <laughs> yeah, just start yelling I mean, clock. No, whatever. <laughs> so a, I'm a special group chat clock. <laughs> All right, what, are we doing this thing right here? No, I'm, no, I'm looking for the clock. Okay, you re- is this my gun? Here he comes. Here he comes. See clock. <laughs> All right, so this is multi-parter, like I said, and the first part of this actually goes back a few months that I didn't even realize at the time. Chris is back, everybody. So this is a. Head coach in the NFL. Okay. Uh, a few months. This is a few months ago. A reporter asked him how did how did how the deal made the team better, whatever that means. And uh, his he replied, uh, "Well, you know, do me a favor and just kind of sit up, just like have a little respect for the process." I know it. Every day you come, don't say it then. <laughs> Every day you come and ask me questions, and you're just kind of like, you know, give me this. After asking the reporter just to be a little bit respectful of the whole process, he requested that he ask me a question professionally, and I'll answer it for you. Yeah, this was ridiculous. Okay, part two. This is now. Uh, uh, Beat reporter reports that this head coach has been routinely late for press conferences, uh, such as Wednesday's session was pushed back 30 minutes from its initial start time, and the coach came in about 15 minutes after the rescheduled time, and he was asked about the importance of punctuality. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and he, his response was, I think, it, I think it just depends on the situation, really. It depends. There's a, pretty, there's a pretty busy schedule from those situations, I think, for everybody. I think fluidity is probably the best answer for you. 
does that even mean? I'm no only, idea. I'm only guessing because of the content. How does the deal make the team better? Yeah, I don't even know what that meant. I'm guessing it's Gruden. Nope. nope. Because I figured it was the Mac deal. Nope. Like somebody asked him, how does that make it better? But when you find out who it is, it's going to make perfect sense. Well, when you about said that, asking I was re- thinking Harbaugh, but he's not in nope. the NFL. Asking a reporter to sit up straight. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And have respect for the process. Yeah, and when he said that, he, he, also, insulted, Who's a real he also insulted the guy's posture. He's like, come on, you don't have any good posture, something like that. Like, yeah. Huh. That was when he. That's was- not Belichick. He's not a, a front guy like that. Mm. Current head coach. First year. Has Belichick ties. Oh. Matt Patricia? Yep. Yeah. This guy wears his hat backwards. <laughs> has a fucking wild, <laughs> gross beard that not doesn't look like it's by design. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Yeah. Do when he- uh, here's some here's an idea. Go win some fucking games and then open your Dude. fat mouth. <laughs> When I'm he, so glad they asked him about it. What a piece of shit. When he went in on the guy's posture, it was fucking, it was like, what? whoa, 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 what are you so doing, insane. dude? What a piece of shit. Yeah. All right, last one. This is a current player in Kim the Kardashian. NFL. Kim Kardashian. When I'm at my lowest, I'm not going to hide. I'm sorry, that loss. Fuck! <laughs> that loss was on me. I let everyone down. It won't happen again. <laughs> Did you tell us the position in the beginning? Sorry. Nope. It's a f- player. Yep. Nick Mullins. Uh, no. <laughs> Good guess. Don, okay. Don, Dante um, Pettis. <laughs> offensive player, non-quarterback. Schuster. Yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't, oh, even, hear, I didn't even hear It is all on I him. I didn't even hear the quote. I oh, didn't even hear one word of it. So on him. Yeah. Oof. Woo! Daddy's good. Yeah, that, that was, was brutal. There was no one else taking the blame on that one. Well, I'll tell you what, bowl season is here. Yeah, it is. And it's time to get in on the action with my bookie. Don't be that guy with no rooting interest as your relatives and friends sit around watching the game. That's right. Not this year. <laughs> no, no. Be the true degenerate you are at your family gatherings. That's right. Uh, when there are a record 41 bowl 41. games to bet on, including the national championship national on championship. January 7th. The 7th. L. It really is the most wonderful time of the year. Year. That's an exclamation point. I supposed know, to be, but it's this, an L. It's it's an exclamation point in the email. So oh, okay, so it's the projector kind of, fucking things yeah, up. Yeah, something's going on. Uh, it really is the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, year. Make sure you're ready for the <laughs> daily action by signing up at MyBookie today. Today, MyBookie. You think you'll get all signed up and ready to go today? Oh, yeah, just click like that, <laughs> snap a finger. No, it's saying <laughs> it's saying the bo- the national championship is January 7th, so, so make yeah. sure you get signed yeah. up today. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, a good two to three weeks <laughs> ahead of time, yeah. They, yeah. Pay, they pay fast when you win. When you win. Ownership really cares about good customer service. Service. And they offer the craziest props. Props. Where you, where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. Who who? <laughs> and if you want to make money during bowl season, that time of year, you got to go to my bookie. My book. I trust them. Yes, you do. <laughs> but you do don't you? have to take my word for it. No, you don't. Word for it. Check them out for yourself. Yourself. Join now, and my bookie will offer you a fifty percent deposit bonus, bonus to make sure you have a nice bankroll. 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 For bowl season. Bankroll. Bowl season. Bankroll. Use promo code GOLD GLOCK. <laughs> what? He took the clock away. Uh, uh. <laughs> when you deposit, to, uh, uh, Rob, Rob's uh, here. Uh, uh, yeah. uh. When you deposit to activate the offer, that's promo code GOLD BLOOD. At my bookie, you, you play, you win, you get paid. All right, there you go. What are we on to next? Tell you. Oh, look ahead okay. to Rams. So as I was writing this, yes. I realized where the confusion came last week. Okay. It's because it actually I said bears on, the, on road. the road and we were at we home. We were at home. That's where the confusion came in. Yes. I, it was a typo. Okay. Normally, what I write is, in that case, I would have wrote, look ahead to the bears at home because mm-hmm. it was a home game. As I was typing this, I went, this is why Steve was confused. I couldn't understand how it could be confusing at all. And then as I was typing it, I go, that's why it's confusing, because it's wrong. It's 100% wrong. <laughs> Literally, when I was typing this in, I went, that's why it was confusing last week. But from now on, this will be the... Well, I like the change, but I did ask for a weather report. Yeah, I ain't got that. Oh. 
fuck you is what he said. All right. Warm. <laughs> Look ahead Warmer to the Rams here. in Los Angeles. Warmer than here. Yeah. Well, this way, if it's a uh, uh, Mexico City game, yep. well, you'll be covered. Yes. If it's uh, London, you'll be covered. Yep. This will do everything. Yep. If it's Wembley Stadium. Steve, can I tell you a story? Please. All right. The year was 2002. Maybe three. I was 12. Yeah. Or 13. Oh, then this story's going to be even better. I was dating a gal who went to the University of Western Connecticut State University. The University of Western Connecticut State <laughs> University. <laughs> 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 Where is that, by the way? Is that uh, that's a university on somebody's it's fake in, ID? That's in Wisconsin, Steve. If you haven't been there. And so now that okay, that its location comes into the, the story. <laughs> Say it one more time. Or the University of Western Connecticut State University. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very accredited university. Yeah, not to be confused with. Western, Western Connecticut State University. Yeah, okay, so Westcon. Yeah, well, or Westcon, right? Yeah. West Coast. So, this this um, college, as we know, is in Danbury, Connecticut, and at the time, I was working for an electrical company, which was in Norwalk, Connecticut. So, if you know Connecticut, you know it's a ride down Route Seven, it, which is a it's part highway for a short travel, and then the rest of it is like how would you. Uh, Speed limit forty five miles an hour. Business is on Main it road, at points. Double yellow line. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever told Main this story. Fair. I hope I haven't told this story here. I don't think so. It so, doesn't sound ringing a bell. Oh, okay, good. So we were going out for a um, one of the guys I worked with uh, stag, and we were going to go from Norwalk to a strip club in Stamford. So I had my girlfriend at the time's car, so I offered to drive. Um, four of us, so there's five of us in the car. So I was including the girl. No, I just had her car. Okay, she was at school. Studying. I was going to say it the was girl didn't go to the stack. No, right? It was finals week. Okay, okay, it, finals week comes into play. So I I left that. <laughs> this is a fucked up story. <laughs> I couldn't I, imagine it started out so wholesome. <laughs> I left her school that morning at six a.m. I took her car. I went to work. We worked the full day. We got cleaned up at the shop, and then we went out. So, it was me, the groom, his brother, and then two other guys. I was the only white guy. So, we go to the strip club. The owner of our company walked in and threw his credit card down and was like, drinks are on me. So, at the time, 23. I wish that you had that hairstyle. <laughs> then? And you were the only white guy. <laughs> <laughs> in a car driving them to the strip club. Yeah. It would have been perfect. Oh, so you would have been like their mascot. I'm pretty sure that was the same year like Malibu's oh. Most Wanna came out. Yeah, yeah. So, mind you, I'm in uh, SB's red Volkswagen Jetta. Okay. I figured. Yeah. So, I go black out. Black out. I went. We we were drinking Bud Ices and Southern Comfort at the time, and I was fucking toasted. So, I don't know what came over me, but I left them there. I said, "Fuck these assholes." And now, mind you, they're twenty miles from their car. I le- or fifteen miles from their. Car. I left them. Fuck it. I made. You did this knowingly, or uh, you did it yeah. absentmindedly? Now, keep in mind, this is pre Uber. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, this yeah, is real pre- fucking pain this in the is, dick. Oh, oh, yeah. This is pre pre cell phone. phone. Yeah, this is pre cell. I did not have a cell phone on me. Nice. Now you did this maliciously or absentmindedly? No, blackout drunk. Have okay. no idea. Absentmindedly. What my pro- no idea what my thought process okay. was. I get back to school, to her school, to Westcon, which is a small miracle. In <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she says, "Where the fuck have you been? They've been calling my phone." all their keys to their car. They took a cab, <laughs> but all the keys and four ounces of weed allegedly are in my car. She takes me out to her car. I hit something. There's damage done. There is damage <laughs> fucking done. I hit some fucking shit. I don't know. To this day, I don't know what the fuck I hit. So now she's got to stop studying to drive me back. 40 miles. Oh, the mic went down. Holy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. The mic went down. Um, oh, what a fucking great boyfriend you are. Oh, the biggest piece <laughs> of shit. So she's now got to stop studying to drive uh, probably an hour and ten minute round trip. Driver, degenerate boyfriend. <laughs> piece of Black shit. Drunk. 
in her, just crashed in her, her car. Her smashed up car <laughs> that her degenerate. <laughs> get down there we get down in near where the place of business was and i said listen i can't handle dealing with these dudes right now <laughs> i already stole their keys and left them. <laughs> <laughs> leave me a dunkin donuts you go deal with <laughs> you are such a <laughs> oh, oh hold on it gets you have no idea where this is going you motherfuckers have no idea how much better this gets so Oh my god, this is like, this is probably halfway through this story. Okay. So, okay. So, okay, so she leaves me in the back of the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. I'm just puking at this point. I'm just puking. In the Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. Yeah. I'm not her- even inside. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Oh, right. You're a real piece of American <laughs> shit. I was in 2002. <laughs> All right, so I'm puking behind a dumpster. She goes down the road a uh, half mile to deal with these dudes, right? What the fuck? <laughs> so the next thing I know, oh. A girl in a white BMW pulls up, and she's like, can I help you? Can I offer you some help? And I'm like, what? She's like, like, do you need a place to stay or something? Right? I'm like, so I'm so drunk. I'm getting in the car, right? I'm yeah, like, of course. yeah, fuck you. got a BMW did better than her Volkswagen. So I go to get in the car, and then my girlfriend pulls back in, and her she was furious. So I guess I had somewhat of a, a conversation with this girl in the white BMW, and she thought I was cute enough. She, went, I don't know, she wanted to take me home. She wanted to help me. She wanted to care for me. I don't know what the fuck she was thinking. She I, was a bigger piece of shit than well, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so hold on. Just hold it. I know it seems ridiculous, but hold, it comes full circle, I promise you. So... <laughs> She t- so now my girlfriend finds me and she's furious. She's fu- the, everything has come full circle for her at this point. She's I, I have to fucking final tomorrow. You know you smashed my car. I'm in a parking lot in Norwalk. You're With a getting, bunch of pissed off people yeah, that you pissed off. You're covered in puke. Yeah, like everything. So whatever. She of course took me back. You know home to Western. And then she had to, at that point, I was telling her I just wanted to die. So I made her drag me up the parking lot, up the out. Like she dragged me. It like dragged me. Okay. I went to work the next day. It was super fucking awkward. Um, but, you know, I, I, I had to pay for the taxi ride and all that shit and whatever. It was all ironed out. They, they got over it, you know. So about three years later, uh, I was with another friend of mine, my buddy Mike, and he was dating some rich girls from Norwalk. He was dating a rich girl from Norwalk. So he says, hey, she's got a bunch of friends. Come out. You know, you definitely work it out, you know. Come out with us one night. Said, okay. So we went down in Norwalk. So me and this girl hit it off, and we're fucking, we're out in her car, white BMW. We're making out. I don't. Whatever, we're making out. And I mean, I never forget this. Her tongue was so big in my mouth. It was like <laughs> intrusive. It was gross. Like a nice big cock, huh? Yeah, it was <laughs> gross. So, um, all right. So we made plans to meet up again. Her and I, we exchanged information. So a few nights later, her and I are talking on the phone. And she goes, you know, we've met. I said, I've never met you in my life. She goes, oh, no, we've met. She goes, I met you in a Dunkin' Donuts. I said, no, I know you're lying. I don't drink coffee. She goes, well, you weren't inside the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I go, what? Now I'm slowly, like, piecing it together. She's like, yeah, I met you. Throw, you were throwing up behind a, a dumpster in Norwalk, and I, was, <laughs> I thought you were cute, and I was going to take you home. And I was floored that I met this girl at another point in life. You know what I mean? Like, I was shocked. Because I, I didn't th- I had told the story. Like, some girl in a white BMW tried taking me home. And no one believed me ever, you know? And sure as fucking shit, I met her again in life. And still didn't close the deal. No, no. I never you know, fucked her. What a homo. Uh, her father was a cop. I got out of there quick. He was a, not, he was a big-time cop. He was, like, the chief of uh, Norwalk police. She was looking to rebel a little. Yeah, so that was a wild night, the wild times of wow. Joey I. All right. Good story, right? Yeah, decent story. Yeah, that was a good one. You're a real American piece of yeah. shit. Yeah, and I, well, I, I drove by that area today. That's what made me think of that, I guess. All right, so we are looking ahead to the Rams in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams of Los Angeles. No, yeah. If you will. Possibly playing, well, they are playing for something. So they're not resting starters, but they might 
be resting Todd Gurley another week. He did not play last week. Well, he might be hurt. Well, he is hurt. That's why he didn't play last week. Oh, good deal. I, I think that if it was a must win in must win scenario, he would play. But because they're in the playoffs, regardless, they're resting him. <clears throat> and so. also, they're not a team like the Saints or the Chiefs or the Seahawks or the Patriots, where home field is a black and white difference. Oh yeah, like if you're the Saints playing at home is a huge advantage. Yeah, massive. If you're the Chiefs, if you're the Seahawks, if you're the Patriots. But the Rams, I mean, it's not even home. Mm-hmm. It's like a place they play, kind yeah. of. So, All right. um, I mean, they fucking... With the last time we played this team, they wiped the floor with us. And that was their... You know, they were they like... Their a, mouth. In their peak of their season. But since then, you know, they won last week, but they were on a three-game losing skid... Where that entire offense was just not good at all. Um, well, they're about to run into the steel curtain known as the 49ers defense. Known as Fred Warner <laughs> and right. Jerry Rice. And, and uh, Fred <laughs> Warner and uh, Elijah Lee. And Jerry Rice. That's right. He holds all <laughs> offensive and defensive records. E-, e. Lee is Foster's replacement. That's right, Baba. I read a story about that. Um, me, yeah, I, I don't know. Give don't, me a key to victory. A uh, key to victory. Score can you give me a minute? Send the Rams? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's okay. easy. I'll give you a key to victory. My key to victory is Kyle Shanahan and Robert Salah closing the door uh, and, and talking, looking at each other like it's a mirror, but they're looking at one another. And they have to... Like a mirror, but they're looking at one another. <laughs> like, not a mirror at all. So, this is like, like a just, two-way just, mirror, just only one, one guy is looking at a just mirror, the other guy's guy is looking through. Just two men looking at each other. No, no mirror at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, what I'm getting at is they need to open up to one another, and they need to become on the same page. Robert Salah needs to help mature Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan needs to help mature Robert Salah. Whether they have to give one another hand jobs at the same time, I don't know what it is. They but... need to become on the same page, <laughs> Steve. Behold then... that quote for one second. <laughs> they need to become on the same page. You know what? That's my key to victory. They need to become on the same page. That's right. They Done. need to give each other hand jobs, and they need to come on the same page. That's on the right. same page. That's right. You work it out whatever you heard there, but yeah. I think that the key to victory is double teaming Aaron Donald because every single team this season that has not double teamed Aaron Donald has let Aaron Donald get three sacks. Why don't we just bounty gate him, take him out? Well. Okay. I think only fuck it, call it a day. Only the Browns. Was that your key to victory? Gate. No, I'm just I'm just offering gate? suggestions for your key to victory. Oh, just no, just double team money and fuck, take his ass out. That's mine. My key to victory is George Kittle breaking the single game Woo! yards record that sexy, was four sexy. yards from beating. Yes, which will then catapult him into the season all time record for a tight end. As pending, well as the 49ers. Pending Travis Kelsey. All-time record. As well as the all-time 49ers receptions record. And everything above. Mm-hmm. Okay. Giddy up, Poppy Chuli. I like where your head's at. Predictions? Predictions. I'm going to go first. I got Curran's first if you want it, just right. so we're on. Yeah, fuck he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, he picked a win this week, actually. Oh. Cheating fuck. Came back around. 20, he got bullied into 23 it. 23 to 21. Curran got bullied into it. All right, I just had. Uh, it's going to be twenty-eight to uh, uh, thirteen. <laughs> I'll go next because I already wrote it down just to make it fair. Uh, I picked a twenty-one to twenty victory. Wow, it's going to be a missed extra point. It gives us the win. Uh, ten to seven Niners. There you go. Ten to seven Niners. Okay. Steven, now, um, mind you, mind you, in the all-time for the season, Steve has four wins, Curran has three. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this could be a big one. Massive. Curran wins and you lose, it's a tie. Does matter to that money? Now, if, Cur- if it becomes a tie, I think Curran wins on the fact that most of his came off of Niner wins. All of his came right. Off. Yeah. No, not last week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not last week. <laughs> but again, you know what? I, you know what? I see after that. 
I see my name up there next. And since I've never picked losses, I'm the champion. <laughs> That's what I see. It's a fair point. The score of this game. <laughs> and if I get three, if I get to three, oh, oh, fuck everybody. I'm crowning them. I'm crowning myself. The score of this game. Can I write on you? Is going to be 31 to 27. Niners. Woo! Poppy Tuli! Uh, who is this new guy on the podcast? I don't know. It's weird. PMA. They call him PMA Steve. <laughs> Big Dick Nick's going to get it done. That's right, he is. <laughs> All right, what are we going to slang a shoe or two? I think, yeah. I think maybe if we're going to go, Big Dick Nick is like the, the easy one. Yeah. I think if we're going to go with the dick one, we have to stick with Dirty Money and call him Dirty Dick Nick. Dirty Dick Nick. I, I like that better. a lot. I think that's the compromise. I think that's better than Big Dick Nick. I, th- I think we're going with Dirty Dick Nick. Dirty, dirty Dick Nick. Dirty, I like dirty that dick a lot. Nick. Dirty Dick Nick. All right, so we go back to the. Oh wait, I guess they do say I'm up top. So I'm gonna. I'm starting the video right now. This video is a live, live. Well, it's not gonna be live. It's a recorded video of our shoe sling segment, and we are going to send this video to our Patreon supporters. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. So here goes something. nothing. Uh, this week's shoe slinger nominees are Cooper Cup. <laughs> Stan Kroenke. Can you scroll down on the Cooper Cup a little? I want I want you guys to get the full effect of. Oh, I know Cooper of Cup. That. Oh yeah. Like. And uh, Les Snead. <laughs> They're all very good. Look at that. All very good. As usual, they're all white. Because those are the easiest put, guys to make was, fun of. No, there was a, there was one that I almost put when I got more pictures. It wasn't good. Reynolds, something Reynolds. Fuck white Josh people. Reynolds. Yeah, just fuck yeah. white people. But when, so like the first them. couple pics, I was like, oh, I mean. Yeah. As soon yeah. as I saw this, I was like, well, there's no sense finding anyone else. All right. Now, this is the final shoe sling of the season, and this I'm so easy. I don't know where I want to go with this, this so I am going to let you guys uh let you guys That's my goal. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Look at that. How is it not? How okay. could it possibly For the whole year it's got to be that. <laughs> when I pulled up a picture of him, I was like, "Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be the perfect end of the season." Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, this week's uh, shoe Before sling of not me. Go back to that other picture, because that's the perfect starting point. That one. Yes, that's the best one. Perfect starting point. Uh, Stan Kroenke, the owner of the Los Angeles Rams. We're ready. We're oh, ready. are you kidding me? <laughs> Hold on. This picture was not taken in 2018. I don't believe it. It's like that's taken like 1972 NFL films. I don't. I don't fucking believe that. that that's a man in America in this year. What a fucking piece! That of- guy totally hangs out with your father. Oh yeah. I mean, if that's not a hair piece, I don't know what is. <laughs> What a fucking... For, for a guy who's got some money, he can't put it together a little better than that? <laughs> I, that fake mop. I bet his mustache smells like sewer water. It smells so bad that I'll fucking I bet his mustache thing. smells like ball sacks. Nah, sewer water. Shit. Oh. oh. This guy... Look at that fucking dick sweeper. I bet my life he dodged a draft to go to Vietnam. <laughs> Look at that one. No doubt. He had his fucking, he had his daddy find it. looks totally real, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good, on, good on you. Go back to that one. Like, who looked at him and went, yep, looks good. <laughs> he looked in the mirror and went, yep, going out today. I put my suit on. Looking good. I wouldn't doubt if he's an Holy undercover $3. Fuck. He, I bet he sucks a dick. Huh? He plays, he plays that game. He wow. Does, he does have that South Miami dick sweeper on his D- lips. Right, yeah. Does he have a wife? How many? Oh, he's on a whole polar. Oh, uh, the two of yeah. you would fucking know. Why don't you tell us? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to tell a story Look about at that guy. I got an alleged story, allegedly story. Look about at that. Is that that's him? What the fuck? Did that happen overnight? Yeah. I mean, it, you forgot to put it does he? Do you think he gets like? Uh, do you think he got a gray hair piece, or do you think he dyed his brown <laughs> one gray? <laughs> Do you dye your hair pieces as, as your side as your side mount goes? Look at that. Oh. Yeah, I think you do, Joe. Look at that. That is so fake. Yep. God. What is wrong with people? Just go bald graciously, you cunt. <laughs> Look at that one curl blocking the receiver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As always, we always take a, a quick stroll down I the bet other. He smells like such shit all around. I don't know. 
I bet his yeah, bl- that's him in '95. I bet his sure. gay, I bet his gay lovers left him because of the way he smells. He em- he emits sewage. Since we like to take a short trip down the other roads, let's make it new this time. Okay. After this, we show him the other two and decide if we made the right decision. Like I like he, that. Like he looks at the other two and says he hates one of them more, or we maybe made the right call. Yeah, that's All a good right. game. I show like me that. pictures, cunt. These These are are the Cooper other two Cup. Options. Oh, he's cute. He might be his boy toy. He Wide might be receiver. the other. He, he's the other guy's boy toy. Wide receiver, Joe. Okay, and give me the other guy. Oh, what's this guy do? Uh, general yeah. manager. Did Ooh. we make the right choice? I think so. I mean, I hate this guy though. Yeah, I don't like him at all. He's he's he was a bully. I'll tell you that much. He's a me tooer for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's definitely pinned a broad in a fucking <laughs> closet. <laughs> you know. He's definitely went into the women's bathroom at the club and said, "Oh, I thought it was the men's." <laughs> you fucking pervert. All but, right. but you hate Cronky more. I, I mean, I really hate them all. I hope they all die. Right, on so the, they were good choice. I hope the bus ride crashes. Nothing on the on the, uh, on the pretty boy. Yeah. Cooper Cup. He's uh, no. He's he's an undercover bill. Three dollars. He is pretty though. <laughs> boy band I mean, boy band Cooper Cup he could party with me that's a very strange name Cooper Cup Cooper Cup what is that I have no idea oh it's a party scene they did oh alright get me out of this it's like an eyes wide shut party <laughs> this is America 2018 alright cunts what is that oh go back poppy what is that guy I have no idea. It's random. Very like random. A white Tiger Woods. I'm always down. He for had that. a Tiger Woods look in his eyes. The eye of the tiger. Random. That's fucking random. Yeah. How is he linked isn't that, to? Isn't there something Tiger Woods about his eyes? Yeah. 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 yeah I can yeah, see yeah, that yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's weird. All right. So we have one email. Two. Two. Yeah, Two yeah. Mattersons. Oh, Two Mattersons. Oh, oh. One from last week. Okay. Matt Matterson, last week. We got any reviews? Uh, I'm going to check that while you read. You have a clock? Clock! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. We're, we can wrap this thing after these two. Don't even worry about reviews. Save them for next week. <laughs> Are we doing next week? Yeah. Why wouldn't we? Well, because it's the final game and we talk about the game. Okay. So we only do one next week. Well, I don't know. We'll yeah. see where uh, we'll see where this road takes. I don't know. Ma- Madison corrects me here on my location. I don't know what Go I'm ahead, contractually John. obligated to do here. Uh, all <laughs> I right. assume we will record next week and then yeah. go and. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so real quick, goldbloodedpodcast at gmail dot com. Get off your holiday cunts and email us, you fucking dick lickers. Um, uh, check out the Instagram ran by Michael Curran, uh, Gold Blooded Podcast. Uh, the Patreon, www.patreon backslash Gold Blooded Podcast. You could leave donations, either a dollar a month, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month. Yes, right now, the backside were uh, voting on what to send Matterson. The selection was made. We've replied to his email. Um, we got uh, also leave us a review. We really would like some reviews. We're trying to gain some steam with this fucking thing. Leave a fucking review now that the season's over. All right, send a voice recording. For yeah, you yeah. Cunt. Matt Matterson says, no subject. <laughs> In my last recording, I said that the team will lose the last two games because winning three straight games against playoff contending teams will be too will be tough. If the Niners do win out, I would be happy. I think the game against the Bears is in Levi's, not Soldier Field. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. And what did we reply to him? I like that idea. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> he's going to be so thrilled to get an email. His phone's going off right now, and he's fucking pumped. Um, matters to no subject. Number two. Hey, crew. How was everyone's Christmas? Mine was nice. <laughs> it was a tough game. What bums me out about the game was the offense. They were not scoring TDs. Even when the defense got a turnover or two. I also put blame the defense, but (laughs) it's when they got an interception, but Fred Warner got a penalty for holding. Anyway, Jeff Wilson is getting better with holding onto the ball. Hopefully he continues against the Rams. Matterson out, really. I like how Matterson's so busy. He can't even leave his prediction. Was it good was it good for you? Pretty good or was it good? (laughs) Joe, was it good for you? It went well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> like well, well, well. well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, you know, try to overdose on New Year's allegedly, and uh, we'll talk later. Uh, emails and voice recordings next week. 
Next week is We're gonna need yeah. the last episode before we go on a little bit of a hiatus, take a break. Cunts. And then before we, get to, we become cunts, and before I don't, and then we can record in my lair. Last time to get your uh, your uh, opinion that nobody cares about out there in the uh, that's right in the airwaves. So your Bradley opinion. Yep. So do it up. Fuck off. Happy New Year. <laughs>